I, I didn't ask for this, but I, somebody sent me a note, and I don't know who sent it. I still don't know who sent it. They said, Pastor, your $2,000 will be here next week. And they didn't even intend for me to know who said it because I don't know the handwriting. But I got the note right here. And I'm just going to leave it just like that. Somebody ought to thank the Lord. He is able. Amen. All right. Amen. Praise God. God is good, isn't he? Turn in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, got, got stuck on something at Bible study, and I, I got stuck on that. I got stuck on that. Hebrews chapter 12. I tried to rush it through, but I couldn't let it go. Amen. Got stuck right there. Uh, verse 12. Verse 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12. It says, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest in a root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. I want to talk about be encouraged. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, no matter what you're going through, be encouraged. Amen. Father, thank you for this day. Bless us with an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You know, recently, I've encountered, I've been encountered a, a lot of news that's discouraging. And, and, and uh, by the way, Angelo, we, our sympathy is with you, lost your brother. Um, I think, and there was one other person, don't know who it is right now, but coming back uh, so <clears throat> so it, it becomes uh, necessary for us to ask the question how do I handle discouragement or we, we, we try to say this which is not really true theologically. We'll say, why does God do that to me? Uh, uh, I, I think some of the reason why folk don't have faith is because they lack the understanding of God's sovereignty and his will and his word. Um, and so that's why faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We, we really don't learn how to have faith unless we hear what God is saying and understand what he's doing in his sovereignty. This particular book of Hebrew is a book that... Uh, encourages these Hebrew Christians to continue in their faith 
because they have a propensity to fall back on their cultural beliefs. So which, which you and I struggle today because we have a tendency to rely upon our cultural beliefs because most of the time that's when we spend our learning period, our learning time is in the happening, in the status quo and what we believe and what to be true, which is not based upon theological understanding. So what, we, what, what the writer tried to do here, well, what the writer did, I don't want to say what tried to do, what the writer did was give you a history of individuals who have struggled in the faith. And, and he put that example, you call it, we call it the Hall of Faith, chapter 11. He put that example there to tell you that none, none of these uh, 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 heroes of faith achieve their goal easily. They didn't have a Messiah to rest upon. They had a they had a faith based upon what God told them to do, in spite of their difficulties. You and I have Jesus now today. So when he talks of the history, he talks, he talks of the heroes of faith. I don't want to get into that. That's another sermon. But what when he, when he summarized in, this, in this, these few verses is based upon a foreseeing, a looking forwardness of what Christ, the promise, have already done. What Christ, the promise, have already done made possible for you and I to be encouraged for, for God has enabled us with his grace. I want you to stick right there. He have enabled us with his grace. That's what we have. His grace. And, and his grace is not diminished by the trouble that you are experiencing. The grace of God has no intentions of degrading you, even if you have a sickness. It has no intentions of bringing you down from your going forwardness in which God has already predestinated you to be. You become discouraged because of what we're going through. But that should be, but, but let, let me just put it this way. The first thing he did, what he did, he put the answer in the first part of the chapter. He put the answer in part one of the chapter. Look at verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The promise is the author and finisher of our faith. Our faith is what makes us qualified to go forward in spite of the circumstances you face. What makes it so great and why I mentioned the Old Testament so much is because the Old Testament didn't have the promise of the Messiah. They just relied upon God's word. Raise the question, how much faith do you really have? But God enabled us as we run the Christian race we ask, have to ask ourselves, what is our goal? Well, the writer says in 1214, he said, follow peace mm -hmm. with all men mm -hmm. and holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. That's the goal, to see the Lord. 
And in my pursuit of my goal, in my purpose to see the Lord, there is absolutely nothing should hinder me from my journey, especially if Christ have predestined me to see the Lord. So how do we deal with the circumstances that we are facing that seem to discourage us? We look at the fact that the goals that we are making in our lives are uh, reminds us of the Lord's high priestly ministry. Yeah. Kingdom of peace and king of righteousness. And I, I, I put all these things out there because what 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 everything else I say today is supportive of the priestly order of what Christ have already established. That's why I ain't, talk, I ain't talked about what discourages you yet because no matter what is discouraging, no matter what you're going through, it does not change the objective of the kingly priest and his ministry. And this is where our faith must be put into action. Wherefore, he said, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. What he's indicating here is, see, I understand discouragement. I understand the sickness. I understand cancer. I understand the lack of money. I understand the family disappointment. I understand all of that. That's what the author says. And that, those things cause us to droop. Mm -hmm. You don't understand, Pastor. You don't know what my sister did to me. You don't understand. You don't know what they. You don't know how they treated me. You. You don't know what they said. The more you talk about it, the more you droop. He said, wherefore, and, and you know, it, it's so, so, so many things discourages us and, and, and cause us to fall away. Uh, and I'm going to tell you the danger of that, by the way, that, that, that it, it affects us in such a way that we lose sight of the priestly order and ministry of God through Jesus Christ. He come to die for you. We got to get our spiritual life. I, told, I was talking about mentioning something about spiritual vitality. And, and you can't get spiritual vitality by not reading your word. Well, <laughs> not studying. You can't get it. You can always fall back to your cultural understanding of things. I don't like what they're doing over there. Hey, hippie me. We the last time you come to Bible study. Or study the scripture, or study, or even come to church. Do you know that's all this is about for us to worship? We need to come to Bible study. We need to study our Bible. You can do it on your own time because some people, well, I don't need to come. I can study my own. Okay. But there's something else the scripture says forsake not to assemble themselves together in the man of Psalm. It said for the purpose of being encouraging to each other. Hebrews, this same chapter, say, consider one another to provoke unto love and unto good works. We discourage and we, our discouragement is based upon nothing essential. If you wasn't getting the word, you, would, you should be discouraged. You wasn't getting teaching. But that's the only thing. Church ain't based upon social events. Wherefore, look up there. He said, 
Your condition of discouragement, whether you are or not, it ain't it has nothing to do with you don't you may not be discouraged now, but you can be in the future. So he says, wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down. Change your persona in the view of possibly failing God. Watch what then. He said, make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. But watch, watch this. He said, if I'm discouraged, I'm going to be stumbling around in life with no aim. Yeah, but shoot, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. If I have faith in God, come on, help me. Here. Do you think the heroes of faith were stumbling around worried? No. As a matter of fact, one of the most, uh, most exciting heroes of the scripture was Gideon. I, I like Gideon. Gideon. Gideon said, God said, I want you to do this. Gideon, Gideon said, wait a minute now, God. Now, I ain't, I, I'm a farmer. All I do is grow crops. You and me go do battle. I ain't, got, I ain't got no experience. But he had faith. Watch what he did. And he, I don't look at it as a challenge to God. I look at it as confirming what God said. So he felt so strongly about God's assignment. The Gideon said, well, I tell you what. I'm going to place a fleece. On the outside, and if you want me to do this battle, yeah, 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 yeah. I want you to wet the fleece and let the rest of the ground be dry. Because that, that is physically impossible except for a divine miracle. Because when do fall, do fall everywhere. So God did it, just like that. And what that did was encourage Gideon. And even when he was challenged in his numbers, I wished I had somebody. That's why I feel I'm not impressed with numbers. Numbers don't impress me. Gideon went to battle with 300 men. I got tens of thousands of men because he believed what God said. So what the, what the writer said is since they didn't have the promise and here we got Jesus who is the fulfillment of the promise. We got everything we need. So you're going to let numbers discourage you? Whether that be numbers in your bank account, whether that be numbers in your, your ministry, or whether it be numbers in, on your job, are you going to let numbers discourage you when the God that we serve can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think? He said, your countenance is fallen. For whatever discouragement you may be experiencing. He says, he said, there's a possibility for you to fall off track. He said, make straight path for your feet. Notice he didn't say, let the church make path, straight path for your feet. But you make path. It's up to you. Since you believe in God, 
Since you have faith in God, I told somebody the Thursday night that we suffer by faith. You got to pay attention to it. We suffer by faith. In other words, uh, faith is my escort through my suffering. I don't care what you're suffering. God is not intimidated by what you're suffering. So pick your head up, smile. Walk on by faith. So this is what he said. He said, he said, this is not a good posture for you as a believer in God. He basically said, it's not a good posture for you. He said, but rather... Be what? Healed. And healing is very universal. Uh, I'm, I'm encouraged by, let me, let me do this right quick uh, because uh, I, I want to, and then I, I'll give you my little three, three points and I'll let you go and get your breakfast or whatever you go do. Go to Psalms 42 for a minute. This is David in a... Now, now what you got to understand that he, he demonstrates to you a, a, a posture of discouragement. But he also, at the same time, flips it to his encouragement. Particularly, he, you, he gives you introduction, says, as the heart panted after the water, water brook, so panted my soul after God. So what he first tells you, and this is what you and I have to do, God has to be my passion. You don't hear nothing else I say. God has to be my passion. And so what, what David says, it isn't just as natural for me to have a passion for God as a deer that's looking for water. My, my soul thirsts after God for the living God. Whom shall I come and appear before God? So what he, he's putting himself out there and in, 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 he's speaking in the third person in, like, like it ain't him, but it is him. He ain't talking about nobody else. My tears have been my meat. Night and day, while they continue to say unto me, where is your God? You ever had anybody ask Check your, check your faith. And, 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 and make me ridicule about it. And you, you man, man, that's, that's really hard. But watch verse four. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. Golly, man, that's powerful. He said, when I remember all this discouraging stuff happened to me, I pour myself out, not into nobody else. Uh -huh. I pour myself out in me. Yes, in other words, I ain't did nothing to myself but look at myself again and say, wait a minute. Right. Check myself. All right. All right. Have you ever checked yourself? Yes, sir. Have you ever wondered, what am I... What, am, what do I mean asking God why this happened to me? It's your human nature to do so. But you got to, you got to walk by faith. Let me show you how he did it and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get back to my text. If I had gone with the multitude, I went with them to the house of God. You, you don't think going to the church is important? 
He said, that's when I recognized, what am I doing? Probably some of the reason he wrote, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my Lord than to dwell in the tent of the wicked. Because he can't find no satisfaction with God nowhere else but in his house. He said, I even practiced tradition of going to church. I kept the day uh -huh. that I went to church. I, I kept the whole day. I used to think going to church was, was one thing, but I discovered, wait a minute. It's a revival. It's a refreshing. It's a renewal. It, and, and I discovered what else I discovered. I discovered it helped me through the next day. And the next day. By the time I get to the end of the week, I'm ready for another worship day. Because I'm going to the house of the Lord to get restored, renewed, refreshed, revived. Because the world has, has acculturated and infected my persona. It caused me to be discouraged. Sickness has happened to my body. Money has become a problem. Worries are now are prominent in my life. Then I go to church. Let me hurry. Let me get to verse five because this is the last one I want to deal with. He said, Why art thou cast down on my soul? Every now and then, you need to talk to yourself. In view of God who enables me with grace. In view of how good God has been to me. Broke, but not broke. Ain't nobody gonna help me at me. Hungry, yet I'm full. Friendless, but got a friend indeed. Sick, getting better all the time. Encourage yourself. In the view of your suffering. In the view of what you're going through. And sometimes it don't have to be physical. It could be mental. Cheap glasses. That's why I buy so many of them. I don't know. I only need reading glasses. He said, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou described in me? Hope thou in God. Watch this. He's talking to himself. And this is what I need you to see today. Put your hope in God. Not in your money, not in your friends, not in your best friend. I wish I had somebody. Put your hope in God. For I shall yet praise him. Now, now here, here comes the, here, here come the, the, the fix-up. I shall yet praise him. For the what? Of his what? You know what he said? He said, I shall look upon God. When you look at God, God, you are examining who he is. You examine he's Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah, uh, uh, Jehovah uh, 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 Rapha. He's everything I need him to be. So since I look at God, he's the help of my what? Of my faith. My posture. My troubles, whether he do or not do, it does not delineate his sovereignty. He is still God, he's still able, and he's always looking out for our good. Yes, 
Move to verse 11. I want to show you a difference. He asked the same question. This is poultry. He did the same thing. This is why I like to talk about David because he expresses the same thing that you and I suffer. Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou described within me? Hope thou in God says the same thing. But watch the last phrase. For I shall yet praise him who is the healer. He's the healer of my face. He's the healer of my posture. Yes, and he is my God. Yes, yes, yes. So that's what encouraged David. And so what, that's what David had post a pre-Christ. But you and I got Christ now. We got much better than David had. We had a forerunner who, who, who took care of all our sins to put our status back in God's hand. Put us back in favor with God. And since God, have, since Jesus have made us, put us back in the favor of God, do you think God is not concerned about you? Do you think a sickness is going to prevent you from spending eternal glory with God? Do you think whether you got money or not is going to prevent your status with God? I know you can't think that. Because whatever your condition is, God is still faithful. He's still healing. Watch how you do it. Watch this. So the, so the author back at Hebrews does this. He said, he said, he said, follow peace with all men. He, he, he now summarized the goal. This is what we ought to be about. Following peace with all men. Following peace with all men. Watch this. What do you mean by that, preacher? Well, you ought to be able to live as much as possible by imitating what you see in, in humanity. You ain't to be a troublemaker, but a peacemaker. Because that's the character of God. What that got to do with my discouragement? Well, it has a whole lot to do with your discouragement. Because what you got to understand is that when I'm at peace with man, I can look upon humanity differently because I'm at peace with God. And when I'm at peace with God, that means that whatever I'm going through is going to be all right. Simply because I don't have man to complain to. I don't, I don't want to share that problem with him. I want to keep my faith in God and do as God directs me to do follow peace with him after which without holiness you can't even sin people don't they want to dismiss that part I'm going to give you these three points I'm out of here watch what he said you either do it or there's going to be some danger He said, you have to look. He said, look in diligence, which means <laughs> it's present, present tense, which means you have to be on the constant lookout. Look at what has happened in history. Yeah. Look at what's happening now and look what's happening in the future. Yeah. Uh -huh. And your observance of that, your careful look at historical present and future. He said, you look diligent less any man fail of the grace of God. Watch this. What he's saying, if you can't see what God has already done, if you can't see what he has already done, you can go back and check the records with Gideon and Moses and check the record with all the heroes of faith. Go back and check the record. God gave them favor because they obeyed him. They struggled just like you struggled. They was in dilemmas just like you in dilemma. But one thing they did, they obeyed God. Even Samson. 
with his head caught in Delilah's lap. He struggled with that. But he came to himself. He poured out himself within himself. And picked up the mantle and accomplished the will of God. Moses was a murderer. And even after he being an obedient to God, he became disobedient. He struck the rock instead of speaking the rock. And, and, and all of those things prevented him from experiencing the promise of the promise of land, but not the promise eternal. Ain't nobody going to help me here. See, this thing ain't about you living now. It's about you living forever. He said, you need to lift yourself up, encourage yourself, be strengthened, lest you fail of the grace of God. In other words, watch this. You will miss God's grace with your complaint. You miss God's grace with your discouraging. God ain't intend for you to walk around. That's right. Come on. Come on. Oh, I don't know how I'm gonna make it. Get yourself straightened up. Look to the hills from which come at your help. The enabling power of grace. Watch it. That's number one. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to what? I'm going to, I'm going to uh, look diligently. Lest I fail. How do I fail the grace of God? By not being careful to see what God is doing. I had to recheck myself on this present administration called the government of the United States. Well, if I get caught up in that mess, I'm going to miss my opportunity for God's grace in my life. God is greater than the president of the United States. Oh, I was mad for a few months. Until I got some sense. Why am I worried about that mess? God is in control. Let me get about my father's business. Do what God has told me. Because in the, in the doing of what God said do, I get the favor of God. Ain't no favor coming from the United States for me. Secondly, he said, "Less." Every time he said "less," that's a point. He said, "Less any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled." He didn't say you don't have bitterness. That's right. He said. Don't let the bitterness spring up in you. Because somebody's discouraged because of bitterness and some things ain't happened. And I didn't get my shot and all that kind of stuff. And it gets you all down and out. He said, no. He said, you keep, if you keep looking to God, God will cut the grass on your bitterness. <laughs> He didn't say he could take it out. Eventually, I think it'll be rolled away if you take favor with God. But, but he did not say that you can't be bitter. He said, don't let the bitterness spring up in you. Because it will make you discouraged. Watch this. And now you become a trouble to yourself and the other folk who depended upon you. So I have to deal with, I have to, I have to constantly uh, be uh, eh, looking at Jesus because Jesus is not going to deal with that stuff because first of all, he's going to give you the power and the grace to overcome it. <laughs> Lastly, going to trouble you and trouble everybody else, he said. 
Lastly, verse 16, I thought it strange in the beginning until I started looking in more, more at the uh, logic of it. Lest there be any fornication, fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. All right. Watch what he's saying. Esau had the opportunity to inherit the grace of God. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. All right, he did. He got distracted well, yeah. by his own greed, his own passion. Yeah. And he sold out. Watch, watch what I'm saying. Fornication does not have to necessarily refer to sex. It could mean uh, associating worldly matters with your spiritual concerns and desires. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Look what here's what Jesus said. You can't serve God and mammon. If you tried, you're fornicating. Yeah. It doesn't negate the fact that sexual moral sin can be a hindrance to your grace also. Amen. I'm not negating that. But in the context of this, it wasn't talking about sexual sins. It, I, I had to look at it in the, in the term of, yes, Esau committed fornication because his spiritual blessing was lying before him but he traded it in for a bowl of soup. What is it that you trade in that God has blessed you with? Which of your talents that you have sacrificed for the world Which of your thoughts that you have forsaken because God instructed and blessed you with an opportunity that you gave up for worldly matters? What amount of mammon is worth the blessings of God? That defines profane, my brothers and sisters. Uh -huh. Esau decided. Now watch, watch what he does, and I'm, and I'm finished because I'm way over time. For ye know how that afterwards, when he want, would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, through so, though he sought it carefully with tears. He lost his opportunity for grace. Yeah. All right. yeah. Now watch what he did. He tried to get it back. But not with true repentance. That's, that's, the, that's the thing that kept him from getting You can get yours back with true repentance. But Esau didn't have true repentance. He was just mad. He never went to God, never went to prayer. He went to his daddy. He never asked God, never told God. God had ordained an inheritance. But see, God, so you said, well, but wasn't it intended for Jacob? Wait a minute. Yes, it was intended for Jacob, and Jacob would have gotten it. If Jacob, and since, but since Jacob interfered with it, he cannot, even when you interfere with God's program, you can't interrupt the will and the providence of God. He made some sacrifices. He lost a whole lot more, especially, I wish I had somebody. He lost his ability to walk straight. There are consequences when you are sinning against God. But back to Esau, he couldn't get it back. He missed the grace of God. Yes. What about you? 
How do you become encouraged? Look diligently. Look back at what God has done. Look presently what God has done. Look tomorrow for what God will do. Lest you fail of his grace. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Don't allow bitterness to dominate you. That's why I come to church. I get mad on Thursday or Wednesday. Shoot. God slap me with a word. I don't know where I care, where I care where it come from. He'll slap me. To, what, why? Why are you this way? Then I started looking like David. Why are you cast down over my soul? It's not a sin to be mad. But it's a sin to sin as a result of you being mad. Lest any bitterness and fornication, even profane, that stop, stop letting worldly stuff interfere with your spiritual duty. Look unto Jesus, the art and finisher of our faith. He did it on purpose. Come on, stand in the sanctuary. He did it intentionally. He never lost sight of the cross. He was looking for it. He, he managed the suffering. So, 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 he ultimately, watch this, achieved his goal. He suffered for us, but it was by faith. I don't know what you're going through. I don't care. I, sometimes it's, it's a doctor's prognosis, a doctor's word. Maybe you're struggling financially. Maybe you're suffering even in ways that I have no earthly idea. But this word stay the same. Be encouraged. Because God is sovereign. One of these days I want to tell you how God has the intention for you to be, be sanctified until you look like him. That you may be conformed to the image of his son. That's why I've got to look beyond. Yeah, let's, let's look beyond right now, y'all. Yeah, yeah. How do you know that the healing won't take place if you maintain the faith and go through the trial that you're going through? Yeah. Don't throw the towel in too soon. Yeah. Hang in there. I'm a witness. He will come through. Yeah. And even if he don't come through, he will come through. Sing something for me, choir. I feel like going on. The doors of the church is open.